Hey Killer Bites fam, how's it going? I'm doing well in case you were wondering. I'm actually getting ready to tell you this insane true crime story. It's about the disappearance of Molly Miller and Colt Haynes. If you like action and mystery, this is the case for you. For the action, we have a super intense police chase. For the mystery, we have the unsolved disappearance of two people. On July 7th, 2013, 21 year old James Con Nip or Con drove around Wilson, Oklahoma with his friends Molly and Colt. Molly was 17 and Colt was either 21 or 22, depending on which report you read. Around 10.30, PM, the group was in the parking lot of a convenience store. There were two cop cars parked in the lot and that's when Khan decided it would be fun to throw rocks at them. It's unclear if Molly or Colt were down, but since Khan was driving, he kind of ran the show. Khan threw a few rocks at the cars in the lot to get the attention of the police officers and sped off. Oh, so this guy just wanted to start a police chase, huh? Obviously the police officers turned on their sirens and followed Khan, which marks the beginning of an intense police chase. There were two police cars following Khan at up to 120 miles per hour. They can continually demanded he pull over, but I'm sure you can guess Khan didn't listen. Instead, he led the cops down all sorts of crazy back roads until losing them entirely. How did he do it? After driving through the downtown area, Khan turned on a state highway 76. He turned off the headlights and turned onto Long Hollow Road, a dead-end gravel road that landed them in a neighboring county. At a certain point, the cops lost Khan, and since he had driven into a different county, I assume the police were all like, this is out of our jurisdiction. They called off the chase, and just like that, Khan was off the hook. The deputies in Love County were notified of the incident but didn't pursue Khan's car. I'm guessing the cops had his license plate info and just planned to try and catch him later? I'm not exactly sure. At around 12.45 a.m., Molly called 911. Five seconds after the dispatcher answered, she hung up. At first, it seems like it may have been a prank call, but turns out Molly and Colt weren't in Khan's car anymore, and it seemed like they were in trouble. Before the 911 phone call, Molly and Colt both made several phone calls to their friends saying they were lost. They asked for a ride and water. They said they were in some field in the vicinity of Oswald Road, and apparently Colt broke his ankle and was laying in the bed of a creek. Colt's friends drove out to the location Molly and Colt gave them, but the duo was nowhere to be found. The friends honked their horns several times, hoping Colt and Molly would be able to hear them and follow the sound, but that didn't work. Colt and Molly said on the phone that they didn't hear any car horns at all. There were a few other 911 calls made from Molly's phone that night, but the dispatcher never actually spoke with her because she'd hang up. Even when the dispatcher called her back, she wouldn't answer, which caused great concern. Why was she calling the police so much? There had to be a reason for this. She had to be in trouble. At 9.39 a.m., one last phone call was made from Molly's phone, and by 10 a.m., both Molly and Colt's phones seemed to be dead. The calls were going straight to voicemail, and friends and family grew increasingly concerned. With that, Molly and Colt were reported missing, and a huge search ensued. The last ping from Molly's phone was on the corner of Oswald Road and Pike Road, so that's where a majority of the search efforts were focused in the beginning. There were helicopters, search dogs, cops on horses, volunteers on foot, people on ATVs, the works. But no matter how hard everyone searched, it was hopeless. Molly and Colt were nowhere to be found. Oh, but what about Khan? You know, the driver of the car, the one who constructed the whole police chase? He made it home that night and didn't say a peep about where Molly and Colt were. He said he ditched the car and they all split off. He claimed to have no idea about his friend's whereabouts. Khan never called the cops that night. He never even told his friends or family about the events that took place. It's just weird, especially when he knew everyone else was panicking about the situation. Two weeks after the incident, the car Khan was driving, a 2012 Honda Accord, was found wrecked and abandoned in a field near where the police officers gave up on the chase. There were apparently over $18,000 of damages, especially on the underside of the car because Khan had driven through all sorts of barbed wire fences and other stuff. Oh, and did I mention that this wasn't even Khan's car? It was his girlfriend's. I cannot believe he just ditched his girlfriend's car like that. Like this was a 2012 Honda Accord in the year 2013. That car is worth a pretty penny. Anyway, everyone knew there had to be more to the story, but nobody could get anything out of Khan. Time continued to pass and the chances of Molly and Colt showing up or being discovered continued to dwindle. It's honestly baffling how little people knew about that night. There was no trace of either person in the fields or in neighboring towns. And as much as it started to seem like the two may have been slain, there was no evidence of that either. As for the running away theory that often presents itself in disappearance cases, that didn't seem valid either. Molly's cousin Paula said Molly and Colt had only just met a week prior. They were both longtime friends of Khan's, which is how they met, but it didn't seem like Molly and Colt would just want to skip town and start a new life after just meeting. It really seemed as if Molly and Colt both fell off off the face of the earth just like that. Colt recently had a child with one of Khan's ex-girlfriends actually, so it's heartbreaking to think that this child might grow up without a father. This also makes me think that there could have been some tension between Khan and Colt considering Colt was with his friend's ex-girlfriend. Eight months into the case, Khan's uncle Colby butt dialed the police. On the call, Colby said, you know, you're effing mad, you know you're effing tired, effing Moxley late, a buck knife, Molly Miller. They shot him in the mouth. 
right there. I can put my finger all the way through it. The dispatcher and most people believed Colby was talking about how his nephew executed Molly and Colt. So the dispatcher called a sheriff named Joe and told him about the phone call saying their phone pinged by Moxley Lake. The sheriff never did anything with this information. Once it hit the one year mark of the two disappearing, the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation or OSBI recognized the high likelihood that Molly and Colt were slain by someone. Around that time, Paula went over to Khan's house to see if she could get some answers from him or at least closure. Paula asked asked Khan if Molly and Colt were okay when he left them in the woods. To that, Khan replied, I don't know what you're talking about. I never was with Molly and Colt. I didn't leave them in the woods. What? That's wrong. He has to be hiding something. Paula then pointed out that the call records from that night placed the three of them together and Khan still denied her claims. Hmm, okay. Then all three of your phones just casually pinged to the same tower at the same time and multiple people reported seeing three people all resembling you, Molly, and Colt in the car together. At one point, Paula told Khan that she knew Molly was no longer alive. She pleaded with Khan to tell her where her cousin's body was, but he still didn't budge. Turns out, Sheriff Joe was Khan's cousin. Joe was the one who told deputies in his county to not get involved in the police chase after the officers from the neighboring county ditched their efforts. He was also the one who neglected to investigate the suspicious phone call Colby made. Rumor has it, Joe has also done several things to help cover up for his cousin's involvement in Molly and Colt's disappearance. Reports say Joe allegedly let Khan meet with relatives unsupervised in a deputy's office where evidence is kept. It's unclear if the room contained any evidence connected to this case, but still, you can't just let a potential perp and his fam bam have a group meeting in a room with important evidence and no one watching them. Something else about Joe is that he told Molly's family they couldn't file a missing persons report in the beginning. They were then advised to file a report with the Wilson Police Department because this wasn't Joe's problem. Colt's sister Monique said she tried to meet with Joe to ask a few questions about the case and he avoided her. This was odd as she considered Joe a family friend, so she assumed he definitely knew more about the case than he let on. Joe was also accused of letting a fugitive stay at his house, helping his son deal speed, and booty bumping speed with his son, which is where you mix the substance with water and squirt it in your, well, I'll let you guess the rest based on the name. And this also goes to show how corrupt Joe was. I thought it was bad enough that he helped cover up Khan's involvement in the case, but to be helping your son sell illegal substances? That just makes me think Joe became a cop to help cover up all the terrible things him and his family were doing. If you're like me, you're probably nosy about the whole fugitive thing, so I'll give you a quick rundown on that. Basically, Joe's son Willie had a girlfriend named Sarah who was wanted for violation of probation, impersonation, and knowingly concealing stolen property. Willie knew all of this and let Sarah stay at his family's house. He said as long as she was dating him, she wouldn't be arrested, even though his dad was a sheriff. Sarah ended up leaving Willie and moving in with another guy, which is when she was arrested. The person who arrested her was Joe. Sarah later told the police everything, including the claim that Joe let her and Willie use his patrol truck to make deals. Joe was finally arrested in 2016 for corruption in office and willful neglect of duty and maladministration. That year, he officially resigned for obvious reasons. In March of 2017, Joe accepted a plea deal and was sentenced to one year of unsupervised probation and he had to pay $370 in fines. But I'm getting too far ahead of myself now, so let's go back a bit to check in with our bestie Khan. In January of 2014, an arrest warrant was issued for Khan and his girlfriend Sabrina. They both ended up surrendering and were arrested by none other than Khan's cousin Joe because he still worked for the sheriff's department at this point. Sabrina actually reported her car as missing one day after the incident to try and cover up for Khan. This blows my mind. If I was her, I'd be dumping his ass and charging him for stealing and crashing my car. Well, Sabrina did the exact opposite and tried to come to her Boothang's rescue. Instead, she was charged with filing a fake police report and making a fake insurance claim. Sabrina pleaded guilty and got a deferred sentence of three years. Khan was charged for evading arrest, assault with a dangerous weapon, and unauthorized use of a vehicle. Khan was sentenced to 10 years in prison, but only served four. None of these charges related to Molly or Colt's case. In fact, when Khan was arrested, he still claimed he had absolutely no clue where Molly or Colt were. To this day, Khan has yet to be charged for anything related to their disappearance, and he is living as a free man. In 2018, Khan's uncle Colby was sent to jail on charges unrelated to this case. While in prison, Colby told the authorities that Molly and Colt's bodies were in Moxley Lake, confirming the suspicious 911 call he made all those years ago. After this tip was released, the authorities didn't search the area. In January of 2021, Molly's family had her officially declared deceased. They did this in hopes to reignite the authorities' efforts in solving this case. Paula said, it made it final for me after seven and a half years of us fighting and trying to find her to know that she's never coming home. She gave a statement that the police didn't try their hardest to find Molly and Colt in the first several hours, which are very crucial in missing persons cases. We could have gotten her home alive, but because this was not taken seriously, we're going to bring her home, but we're going to lay her to rest, said Paula. In May of 2020, 
2021, the FBI opened an investigation into Molly's passing. Reports say an informant came forward with information that may lead to the discovery of her body. It's unclear if this is Colby in the Moxley Lake tip, but it seems like it to me. Another reason the FBI opened this investigation is because Molly is Native American. At the time, there was something in place called the McGurl ruling. This law revoked state prosecutors' authority to pursue criminal cases against Native Americans in certain parts of Oklahoma, which is why the FBI picked it up and opened a federal investigation. In November of 2021, a search warrant was submitted to search a property on Pike Road, which was near the area Molly and Colt were last seen at. Paula and several others believe either Molly or Colt, or both, are buried on that property. Both of their phones were last pinged in that region, and there is allegedly evidence to prove their direction of travel to this specific piece of land. A private investigator on the case named Phillips said this area was never investigated during all of their past searches. Apparently, officials said they searched it, but that was a lie. Something tells me Joe was involved in that lie. The owners of the property wouldn't allow anyone to dig without a warrant, so a warrant they requested. Both law enforcement officials and private investigators got together and gathered information. They apparently put together a solid timeline of everything and built a very convincing case for the warrant request. Unfortunately, the warrant was denied as this was still a missing persons case and there was no proof that a crime was committed. Molly's family literally had her officially pronounced dead and the OSBI even claimed years ago that this is potentially a murder case. And that's where this case stands right now. No answers, no arrests, just more questions and more heartbreak from the friends and family of the victims. Authorities say they are still actively working on the case and friends and family members of the victims continue to seek answers and closure. If anyone has information that might lead to the discovery of Molly or Colt, please call OSBI at 1-800-522-8017. This case is extremely sad and many people wonder if it could have ended differently if Sheriff Joe didn't cover for his cousin and if the local authorities took action immediately. There are a few different theories of what people believe actually happened. Some people think Khan executed both Molly and Colt and others believe he didn't but was definitely involved and is withholding information. In my opinion, it seems like Khan definitely did it and maybe Colby helped bury them in the lake. Let me know your theory in the comments below and I'll see you next time on Killer Bites. I'm Allie, thanks for watching.